Yeah, my name is Apia Kubi Johnson, and uh, I'm doing this study with my other senior colleagues, uh, Robert Isaac, and then Charles, and also with Juka from the University of Tampere. And this paper is basically using the GAP tool to estimate poverty rates for Ghana using the various data sets available. As by way of history, Ghana has about 25 million population, the first country in South Saharan Africa to gain independence in 1957, and also currently a new middle income country with uh, per capita GMP above 1500 uh, US dollars, which is quite controversial because uh, a lot of people say they don't fit in their pocket. As you are saying, so in about two decades, uh, GDP per capita has doubled, which is quite interesting, from just about 1200 to 2100 USD in 2005. Right? In terms of human development in, uh, ranking, Ghana is about 135, with life expectancy about 65 years and also seven years of schooling, so that's quite interesting. By way of growth rates, you can see that from this graph, uh, Ghana is quite improving in terms of growth rate, even though initially uh, there were decreasing growth rates, but now it's improving, and with the discovery and new production of oil also, the new growth rates are very interesting, with 14% the, uh, the current 2011 figures, 40% very high and very encouraging. S and most of these uh, nice growth rates we see may have been accounted by the review, by the anti uh, growth policies and also anti poverty uh, policies that have been adopted. So, by way of review, uh, there have been some policies adopted and implemented, and that may have uh, contributed to the improvement. One program was called PAMSCAT. Uh, it was a program to mitigate uh, the adjustment. Uh, uh, in the economy since 1989. Another program was the Vision 2020. It was a very ambitious uh, strategy, but failed to improve higher growth rates uh, in the past. Two other interesting ones are GPRS 1 and 2, targeting poverty, actually. The first one was 2002 to, uh, was initially done to help Ghana uh, benefit from the HIPID initiative, and that was interesting because a lot of programs benefited from it, which we also achieved macro stability through that, and, and, and that's mostly the time that we started seeing faster growth rates. Also, the GPRS 2, 2006-2009 also targeted poverty, so it was quite interesting. Other uh, programs included in the GPRS 2 was the LIP, which was the first cash transfer program actually targeting the poor since 2008, with uh, inclusion categories being very vulnerable, uh, single parents with orphan children, extremely poor people, people who are uh, incapable of working for themselves. And currently, the inclusion criteria of households in the scheme is increasing, which is quite interesting uh, in Ghana. Now, by way for this study, we use uh, the, the data sets collected by the National Task Service from 1991 to 2006. And there are three data sets, uh, call it one, GLSS 3, 4, and 5. They have similar methodology, so the data sets are quite comparable for this kind of analysis. And we also augmented the analysis by one recent data set called the ESA Yale panel. That's the baseline survey. So that, uh, in 2009, 2010, and even though the methodology is quite a little different, they are quite similar in terms of uh, uh, expenditure figures. And uh, one advantage of the yield uh, baseline is that it contains quantities, whilst the GLSS data did not contain quantities. They didn't capture quantities, but they captured expenditure and also prices. So we could deduce the quantities from the expenditures and the prices. Now, by way of empirical approach, with this uh, some things a little different from the original gap code. One thing is uh, we used, uh, because we didn't have actual quantities in the GLS data sets, we used the prices as the cluster level prices to divide the quantity, the, the values, expenditures to get the quantities. 
and also unlike the the standard toolkit whereby the price uh, the, the prices divide the the values to get the quantities here we used uh, and the prices are then used to deflate the actual values by your price index we used directly the original food uh, price index in the data sets which was collected so we relied on it and initially we experimented with 10 regions because there are 10 regions in Ghana but the results were not very encouraging so we we narrowed down to three regions that is Accra, the capital being one region and then other ever centers being one region and also all rural uh, communities being one, re one region so we experimented with three regions and then I think the results were quite encouraging Okay, and we also experimented with just one uh, region for the whole country to see how the results will be. Now, by way of results, if you compare the official rates with the gap code rates, uh, they are quite interesting. For the first data sets, the gap computed rate is about 20%, even though the official rate is about 52%, which is quite a big gap. And for the second data sets, the uh, predicted rate is 29%, while the the official rate is about 40. It is the last data set which is quite interesting. The official is 29 and the gap code is 34. But if you, com if you compute the correlation between, for the 10 regions, and as you can see on the map, the correlation between the official rates and the gap code rates, I think is quite high. For the first data sets, GLSS3 is about 0.7. And for the two other data sets, it's about 0.9. So even though the levels are different, in terms of the ranking per region, you can see that it's quite reliable. If uh, the the rates are being used as a tool for distribution work and, and also targeting four regions, I think the two data sets are comparable and the two the two methodologies can be relied upon, even though the levels of the property predicted are different. So that's one thing that we were happy about the results. Now we, yeah. So by quite conclusion, the last data set that we used that is the yield baseline, I think the, the poverty predicted rates were just about 20, which is the lowest in the, in, in the computations. And that is not so surprising because as um, the economy is growing and there are so many poverty and poverty poverty measures, we are expecting that poverty will be going down. But the extent and the, uh, and the change in, in the poverty is what's uh, now yet to be confirmed because the the methodology for the base, the Yale baseline is a little different from the the GSS data set. So we can't say that there's a change of 10%. No, we, we can't say that. But we are still experimenting with the results and see what, why the, the gap pool <coughs> poverty lines are so lower than the, the, the national poverty lines. Thank you. Thank you.